If you blew all your dough on holiday gifts, either for yourself or others, then get a load of these freebies for January. On January 26th, to continue talking about the H form and its sound as a thread, as a rope, and actually because of the trailing movement of the rope that uh, we started as a human being, you know, the technology, the first technology of making a rope, then we uh, link it very easily to the umbilical cord. So you will find the H is closely related to fertility and, and also the human obsession of this lineage. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about it and I will pull in a lot of different cultures I compare different cultures how the umbilical cord was actually hidden as the patriarchal society you know took over and uh, you will see uh, clearly um, how it is hidden and I hope from now on after you watch this program you will pay a lot of attention to sometimes how some itch is really hidden underneath a lot of the patriarchal culture okay um, I'm going to start of course with my normal um, uh, slide of the basic thing telling you that uh, what is my theme about. It is more than 20 years of my uh, uh, research on the origin and the connection of ancient language. And what you see here is the basket starfish and uh, you will see that we all share one common core instead of uh, the root. And uh, if you understand language like that, you'll know that we are all related. Every single family is not a tree, it's just a branch of the same organism. And uh, only when we look at language like that, we can look at everything on an equal ground. So this tree-like business should be changed. And I'm also presenting a feminine perspective and um, as I, uh, someone from the East, you know, I think I can see something uh, different uh, from a Eurocentric lens. Okay. Um, okay. As I said, I will talk about the uh, lineage this time, and you will see from my following slides. Just give me one second. I will find my slides. And I have prepared almost 18 slides, so uh, I, I hope I can finish them. Oh, why is it? Okay, one second. And I might have to go a little bit fast, bear with me, okay? Um, Okay, uh, last week I showed you this uh, map right there about the uh, airy itch, you know, to do with a lot of a haze, and then the other one is the rope. I will show you again to remind you what I have talked about. Uh, on this end, you know, you will see a lot of air, you, you know, signs. This is Ugaritic, this is Chinese, this is Arabic, this is Georgian, and all representing the very light, airy sound. And from this, you get all the haze halo, her, I mean hurricane, how, holler, happy, all this air coming out from the mouth. But tonight I'm going to talk about this side, the, about the hank, you know, the rope itself, and how the Sumerians started with this, you know, a lot to, to have a lot to do with the weaving, trilling business, until the Hungarian, the Greek, the um, Egyptian hieroglyph and the Chinese all carry the high, the heavier guttural H sound. And then on this side, you know, um, the Sumerian also have this symbol. And from from this symbol to the proto sinaitic to the ancient Hebrew and Phoenician, and finally get to the Greek H symbol. So you can actually see the capital H as the real, really the rope sign itself. So I also gave you a lot of these words, you know, to do with a uh, hair and hang and to the uh, air and heritage and the hug and all about the same about uh, I mean the same thing that shared between this one and this one is the twisting movement so uh, very naturally the rope is very closely related to ancient time you know other than weaving all the time trilling all the time they were giving birth all the time too so today I'm going to talk about a, li a little bit about this umbilical cord you know first of all I need you to to understand that a lot of the vilification of the female has been done in the past um, many thousands of years. 
and I will show you very clearly from the uh, the goddess Hera. And um, Hera is actually um, a very important goddess at the very beginning, and because I truly believe that in a matriarchal society the hang you know the rope itself is actually lies with the female so it was a matriarchal society so Hera as you can see I show you the original writing you will see that visually even if you don't read you can tell by this rope right there that it is the one who holds the rope and if you understand the ancient languages this part of Ra right there is always to do with Raja Ra Resh the head itself so who's the head that holds this rope this is Hera this is a female not a male okay and then um, you will see that the ancient Greek you know uh, model you know Hera like this the mother a goddess and also she takes care of all the childbirth and so on and everything that she holds is of peace you know this is the staff showing her authority and this is an empty vessel a libation vessel this vessel is closely related to the empty womb of herself you know which give birth and give out the water of life and then and then she always represent peace but then uh, from her all the way to Athena right there you will see that Athena even though you know it's very easy, interesting for the ancient time you know you, you mold a goddess the only difference that you can tell who is who is mainly by the things that they are holding so instead of holding the power staff you know she's actually holding uh, the uh, instrument of war and, um, and the shield itself you know instead of this it changes into a shield so this peace and war you can actually see the background change you know of a human society so I last week I also briefly told you about you know why is hero so important you will see the original writing of the Greek right there you see hero actually is the one who also links to the mother goddess and because hero is not come by his, his courage hero is actually really born of a half god you know normally it will definitely be related to God but as time went by you know you will know that Zeus you know the father God you know always go around raping and laying with a lot of different women and then um, I don't know why we are still worshipping to such a man okay and then um, that's why you can see the vilification of female and then the blind worship of, of a man that lays around with different people and then rape different people so at the very beginning to be a real hero you have to be mothered by a goddess you know and of course you know since the Zeus rape a lot of female uh, god and god and mortal as well so uh, those father by uh, by Zeus is actually a little bit lower class you know so so how did we actually ended up with you know worshiping you know the uh, a lot of this hero uh, first of all there is a very important hercules or heracles you know one is a latin name the other one is a greek name and but they but they are the same person which is also you know uh, by the using of the h itself right there it also shows you the royal or the divine lineage right there and but you they, they use this name to actually fool the ancient people because Heracle, if you read more about his, of his history, he was born with this name, Alcaeus. Okay, he actually born with a very aggressive A. As you know, the Alpha actually started, you know, in the patriarchal society as the bullhead itself. You know, but so why did the ancient actually add, uh, put him in this name? It is because, you know, they have to make the ancient people actually believe that the line is actually continue with this guy right there and uh, and how did he actually get legitimately uh, accepted by the ancient because he actually went off and married Hebe who is Hebe Hebe is actually the daughter of Hera you see the mother line actually carry on you know from Hera to Hebe and Hebe is actually uh, the cupbearer of all the gods and he she's actually the goddess of youth and that's why but then you don't hear her all 
the time because by this time a lot of the uh, attention were actually put to the men you know the female were already already put aside you don't actually put a lot of attention to it just as you look at the Jewish line the Jewish bloodline also carried on by the women not by the men okay so um, they can they want to hide it but somehow it is still not being able to be be hidden okay so after that, you know, after they actually push out all this, you know, a man world, the patriarchal line, and what is the importance of Athena? Athena is actually born from Zeus because men do not have the power to give birth. So, of course, the story is that uh, Zeus, you know, as far as you always hear, is that Zeus came out from the head of, uh, I mean, Athena came out from the head of Zeus. That's why, you know, he get. Uh, she got the name Athena, uh, that's from the head, you know, that, that's why she's the goddess of wisdom as well. And But the story goes on, if you really look at it carefully, it is that uh, the uh, Zeus actually was worried that because he overthrew his father and that he's worried that his own offspring will also overthrow him, so he actually swallowed his wife. His wife is actually called Matis, is also the goddess of wisdom, and then, um, but when he swallowed Mattis, she's already pregnant with Athena. So inside uh, inside Zeus himself, you know, Mattis was actually hammering out all these weapons for Athena herself. And that's why uh, Zeus got a headache, and that's why he had to go and look for a doctor. And from then, you know, when someone opened his head and Athena jumped out all fully clothed like this with the warlike things. So it is a pity that uh, the, the peaceful women who's holding a staff and holding just the libation dish ended up have to hold the, uh, the, the war uh, weapon but then in a world when the patriarchal society is like this you really have to fight your way back okay so uh, I want to uh, talk a little bit about to prepare you to, from, uh, for all the slides to come. And the fertility threat, you know, was very important because the ancient believed about propagation. And that's why, you know, the threat is very, very important. Since female is the only, uh, has the power of giving life, giving babies, and the male do not have it. So it is very natural at the very beginning that females were worshipped. And then, uh, of course, at that time, everything, uh, uh, who has a hope of propagation ex uh, uh, actually being worshipped. So you got what you call the pagan world. Everything was being worshipped, not only one god. So, but when the patriarchs take over, as population grew to a certain extent, propagation, you know, caused a lot of conflict because you fight for water, you, f you, you fight for war, you know, so that's the time when male gradually took over. And then you will see that uh, for thousands of years, signs and symbols Symbols of female capacity were hidden, transferred to the male, or disappeared completely. And the patriarchal took over, especially after you know uh, the guise of a monotheistic religion. By that time, only a god in uh, in the gender of a male is being worshipped. So we, you will see that the whole human history came down like that. First of all, I want you to see this very important word, hefty. What is hefty but a powerful female? Because she is actually very, very strong. As you can see, all these ancient, ancient um, statues of female. Have you ever seen ancient men, you know, statues coming out, you know, dug out from the archaeologists? No, you only saw female being worshipped. The hefty is very, very important because um, up till now, you know, even in the Arab society, the bigger, you know, um, uh, hip you have, you know, that you have a hefty hip, then that means you have a power of giving birth. That was being worshipped from the very ancient time, you see, from the at least 38,000 years ago, you know. Uh, no, not even 1,000 years ago. I mean 38,000 BCE. So this 40,000 years ago. Okay, so the matriarchal so uh, tradition carries on. You also find these statues in Malta. These are found in China. And later on, also in China, you will already see the vilification of a female you know the birth or uh, the power of giving birth is also being um, vilif vilified okay so 
on uh, in the following slides you will see how it comes to be first of all you will see from the ancient French caves you know 40 more than 40,000 years ago you see all this you know already there were lots of these you know vulva pictures coming out you know if you look at the vulva itself you know it actually looks like an the eye symbol okay so I will want I want to compare with the ancient Hebrew you know ayin this this symbol right there first of all you know at the beginning it was appeared as an eye then it appears as a hole then it gradually changed like a Y shape and then gradually this is what the, the Jewish people will write this ayin sign right there so if you turn both of this you know straight you know you will have this sign hieroglyph had this sign as a mouth okay but they only uh, light horizontally and then the South Arabic this is a F symbol and F symbol it means the mouth and both actually the eye of the mouth can be expressed this way of course the eye and the mouth and also understood as a hole or the opening and you will see this why very carefully what why is that but this the pubic area of a female and you will see very very clearly this ayin in Arabic it will be ayin just like the I word and then uh, in Chinese will be an okay and then uh, in Chinese in Mandarin yin or in Cantonese yum will be actually the private part of the female so all this coordinates since the ancient time and I will show you uh, in other parts of the world this is from the runic world the Celtic world you know so you will see that they worship you know this ancient goddess as well you will see this symbol appear again and again and then you will see the hieroglyph used this as a mouth symbol and they will use this this is a symbol of a human being you will see that from this hole a lot of light comes out you can see it from the sun or the or the spring or the water flows out however you understand it this again south arabic this is the mouth itself and i show you uh, uh many weeks ago you know i show you a, a tribe that i found in the middle uh in the desert of yemen and this Bedouin, you know, they all have the whole tribe carved, you know, I mean, tattoo their face this way. The eyes are here, they use their mouth, and then a lot of beer coming down from there. You will see, actually, they use their head as a plant itself. The mouth, actually, the, uh, the opening, the hole, with lots of things coming out. You will see also, you know, a lot of these, you know, uh, very, very similar symbols in, in ancient Roman time. This is a picture I took in Tunisia and uh, you will see that no matter where you turn it it either tells you an eye or an opening and uh, of course the, the ancient are loaded with meanings you know and this is maui tattoo you will see that this is uh, i'll show you two writing this are real writing this is hieroglyph human being this is actually chinese means uh, the uh, multitude of people as you can see you can understand it in a similar way and if you put this hole as the mouth of a female you will understand what it is saying and this inward and these people are all thousands of miles away, okay? The Ainu in the north of Japan, this is in Alaska, the Eskimo you used to call them, and this is a tribe in Taiwan. These are all ocean-going people. Look at that. They have been preserved those, you know, from a long time ago. They all understand that the carving of these are all fertility symbols. And I'll show you another Easter Island, you know, symbol, and where they, they uh, preserve serve the pubic part like that and you will see that this is a Chinese hay you will, can hear the sound hay actually it means pregnant in Chinese you will see this three point life sign and also this little bowl right there this bowl is constantly either representing the mouth or actually the female bowl which is the worm itself and then um, you will see this you know the Easter Island they also worship this plant and this is Chinese writing also the plan it also means life or giving birth itself and you will if you pay attention you will see the symbol appear in every single culture that means life itself and um, I will show you uh, also uh, from the other part of the world and I hope you don't get upset with me because uh, this is a very holy site in the Muslim religion and this is the what they call the Kaaba and Mecca 
and when they go to the pilgrim this is what they actually form this is the center then uh, they always think that this is a very male male symbol and uh, you would also understand it as a Kaaba as father okay and and then uh, you would see it as this way and if you look closer it uh, the whole building was built around you know it's hiding something inside what is hidden is actually this what they call the black stone look at it carefully when people die in to touch it it is actually uh, a very ambiguous shape of a symbol uh, well I don't want to say you know but you make decision of what they are really worshiping is this a female or male you can tell and and I will also take you to the other part of the world this is Chinese and we have actually a, a stone called Ayin stone okay and I will show the ancient Hebrew this again this is Ayin okay this is the eye the opening and this this is Chinese and Cantonese you read it as an okay an and this if I read it as this is yam or yin as you can see an upside down triangle upside down triangle and then this is water river flowing out for us it means the vulva and darkness or it's an other way of saying a female or you can actually refer it as the pubic part of the female and then in Yunnan, which is the northwest of China, there is a, a worshipping place where they worship a stone where people are dying to go and touch this stone. And, and somehow in that part of the, uh, the China, it's still called a yan stone. A yan stone. But if you read that Chinese word in Cantonese, it's still pronounced a yin, okay? A yin, a yin stone. And this a yin stone is actually the vulva. Uh, we understood it very well as vulva. It's as the Cantonese was speaking uh, Hebrew itself, a yin, a yin. And there are actually ma many of this a yin temple uh, in all parts of China. And then uh, the people will be praying, they will be dying to touch that little the hole and then uh, they believe that when by touching the this hole you will have fertility you will give birth to children so uh, you will see that people were all worshipping the very ancient mother goddess and I bring you to another religion the Hindu lingam the yoni okay and you will see that of course you know on the surface they will always tell you this is the the the, the, the phallus do you know the the male itself but of course you will see that underneath the yoni this is a female part this is a hieroglyph you know, hum, um, representing the worm of the female. But if you look at it carefully, if you go further back, actually this stone was not that straight. It is actually this shape. If you Google the word yoni, yum, remember, yum, yin, yon, you know, you can actually use this word. It just depends on how you pronounce it. If you Google for the yoni stone, it actually came out as a female egg. So in the center of of this yoni, um, the female worm is actually the female egg itself. But somehow as time went by, they want you to understand that as a penis and they straighten everything and you worship instead of a female you're worshiping a male so it's always a, a something in between that you are worshiping it depends on whether you are living in a patriarchal society or you want to look back to the matriarchal society the origin of uh, know of uh, of everything and uh, the following picture is a uh, some pictures that I took you know I risked my life really and this is in the center of uh, an area in Marib you know where Os Osama bin Laden uh, originated from in Yemen and I have to dress myself and I have to have someone smuggle me into that area and then this is the throne of the Queen of Sheba and right there I saw uh, uh, some altar you will see again this is just a very a three tier uh, of what you see the your knee as you know you will see this is a uh, uh, you know like a table that is they are doing the sacrifice. This is another view of it. And the sacrifice will be done here. They said that the blood will be dripped from here down to the second tier and then finally dripped down into this bowl right there. And then this is a top view of it. And you will see that, as I said, the 
blood will drop from here to the second knee and then drop into this bowl here. Now I want you to look at this bowl. In Arabic, you will call this bowl hold, okay? And then when I heard this sound, is I actually, uh, I was very amused because, you know, in Chinese, that word can actually pronounce as hao in Chinese. Now in the next slide, you will see uh, the sex sexual aspect of all the languages. This is a Chinese symbol. We call it hao, okay? Hao gradually become like this. And then for us, it actually means the mouth or the opening or a gate, which is an exit of something. And it's also the article of a well or a spring. For us, it actually means some uh, something related to fertility too. And then sometimes how can appear like this as the pubic triangle. But now let me take you to the Arab world. And as I said, that bowl itself is called how, okay? It means a basin. Sometimes you can uh, put water there and food there, you know, to feed animal, you know, it's a uh, vessel of fertility and in ancient uh, hieroglyph this is a hum hum is actually a water vessel or a well or a spring and then hum the same sound with pun with the female part and in Chinese, uh, if you say hum, uh, can you see this, you know, the pubic triangle, you know, turning upside down, pouring water in this bowl right there? Hum, actually for us, it means something you hold inside. It has to do with pregnancy. And then hummer in uh, Arabic is also pregnancy. And you have the English word hum. If you look at hum in your in English dictionary, it either means carry a heavy load, of course, a baby. And uh, also it means a sexual intercourse it actually means the, uh, the shape so uh, a hummer also in Arabic actually means a woman or the donkey because they are always carrying heavy load which can be a load or also a baby okay that uh, Hebrew has hara also means um, pregnant and Chinese hey also means pregnant and uh, of course this her is uh, directly related to umbilical cord okay now I look at it in a different angle if you look at understand it as a spring as an eye, the Chinese is an, is a spring, a hole, or the well. And then uh, the Arab has ein, also a spring. The Hebrew go down this way, they all mean, you know, the spring or the eye. And then the Chinese again is an yin, that means the female. And you will see that the, it also comes to this. Okay, um, sorry, I cannot finish that uh, slide. I will talk to you next week. I hope you get a little bit of what I'm trying to tell you this week.